Hello folks, it's time to do some simulations based on slew rate and gain bandwidth product. So what I have over here is a little non-inverting amplifier utilizing a 741 op amp. Now the specs for a 741 are an F2 of approximately 1 megahertz and a slew rate of about half a volt per microsecond. So first let's take a look at the gain bandwidth product. We have a gain of RF over RI plus 1, 18K over 2K plus 1 gives us a gain of 10. And with an F unity of 1 megahertz, dividing by that noise gain of 10, we have about 100 kilohertz for an upper frequency limit. That's our F2. We expect our gain to be dropping off below, um, below the ordinary level, 20 decibels, right? Gain of 10 is 20 decibels. And in uh, log form, in decibel form, and uh, we'll see that dropping down once we get above about 100 kilohertz, right? 100 kilohertz is going to be about a 3 dB down point. So we expect a gain of maybe 17 dB or so at 100 kilohertz. Now, I've set up the source over here for a sine wave. This is a 50 millivolt peak sine wave at 1 kilohertz. Um, we'll be looking at this with the slew rate as well. Um, right now, however, we're going to do a Bode plot. So we'll go up to the AC analysis, grab the transfer characteristic. I'm going to plot from 100 hertz to 10 megahertz. Uh, log type, obviously, amplitude and phase. And here is our plot. So up here on top is the amplitude. There's our 20 dB gain that we expected. And we can see this thing humming right along, and then it starts to drop below that level. And there's 100 kilohertz right there. So this line is 20, this line is 10. We can see, yeah, that's right around 17. We can verify that with, uh, with our cursor. And as we move around, so there we are, right around 17. Just a little over 100, um, 100 kilohertz. So that's looking really good. And you can see how the phase response at lower frequencies is zero. But as we go to higher and higher frequencies, those lag networks are kicking in and we're starting to see more phase shift. Okay. So that works out pretty well. And we could sort of play with this, change the resistor values, change the gain, and watch what happens. Um, but let's take a look at a transient response before we go any further. So as I said, I have a 1 kilohertz sine wave set up in here. So I'm going to run this from 1 uh, millisecond to 3 milliseconds. So we can see a couple of cycles. And immediately following the turn on transient, we'll see what looks good. All right, so um, what we're seeing over here, right? the green is the source. So there's our 50 millivolts, right? There's 200, so there's 50. Here's our V load, which would be 10 times the size, or about 500 millivolts in phase looks great okay now if we calculate the power bandwidth for this 741 um, and we look at it at a larger level larger voltage level we're going to start seeing some slewing so uh, what i'm what i'm going to do here is change the source a little bit we're going to keep the sine wave obviously enough um, but i am going to uh, increase the levels a bit. So let's change this to a volt and um, punch this guy up to about 10 kilohertz. With a 10, uh, with a 10 volt output, we should see um, some modest slewing uh, the F max will calculate out to be around 8 kilohertz. So if you're using uh, 0.5 volts per microsecond and uh, a 10 volt peak, the F max for the 741 circuit is going to be about 8 kilohertz. So I just chose a 10 kilohertz source. We should see just a little bit of um, slewing. Okay, it's going to be kind of subtle. Uh, I'm going to have to change this a little bit. I'm using 10 times the frequency, so... Let's take a look at maybe, um, say, like 1.2 milliseconds. Okay, so I got a couple cycles here. Here's my input again. Um, here's my output. And if you look at this, you can see that 
this is a little weird. It's a little asymmetrical, you know, especially when you look up around the, the tips of the waveform. This has gotten overly straightened. These sides have gotten overly straightened because of the, uh, the slew distortion. Um, so it's not a perfect sine wave, you know, it's a little dodgy, okay? But if that's an unconvincing, right, because here we are at uh, 10 kilohertz and we're saying it's going to occur right around, you know, 8 kilohertz. Well, what if we went considerably higher than this? You know, what if we were looking at uh, a notably higher frequency? So, you know, let's throw in maybe 50 kilohertz, right? Five times higher. And at 50 kilohertz, I'm going to knock this down here. So let's say maybe about one point. Oh, let's look at a few cycles. So let's say uh, 1.05. All right. Well, it should be pretty obvious now that you've got this triangular shape. Okay. And also notice the amplitude has decreased. Right. We should be looking at a 10 volt peak coming out of here. And we are not getting a 10 volt peak. That's just not happening. We still have the one volt on the input, right? There's a volt and a half right there. So here's a volt. But, you know, we're getting about, eh, you know, a couple of volts essentially peak out of here. Really, really smacked into a triangle wave. So, you know, clipping tries to turn everything into a, a square wave, basically. Chops the top and bottom off. And slew rate limiting basically tries to turn everything into a triangle wave. There you go. Kind of disgusting, don't you think? So, you know, what if you want to measure this? Well, with this waveform, you could just get two probes, two, um, excuse me, two cursors and just measure the, the rate of change. Or you could just throw a square wave in instead of trying to really push this thing up on the frequency end. But just to sort of illustrate what's going on here. So... All I would do is just sort of move A and B around to convenient points, wherever that might be, okay? Um, and then just get the, the delta V, delta T on, on the thing. All right, so here's a, you got a time differential here, you got a voltage differential here. Um, divide them out, see what you get, All right? And in this case, you'll get around half a volt per microsecond, All right? So here's a, that's 10 microseconds right there, right? There's 1 to 1.01. So, you know, if I push this out here to maybe, you know, a portion of that, we can see exactly what's going on, okay? Um, start looking at these numbers. At 5 microseconds, we're doing about, you know, 2.6 volts. So, yeah, that's, you know, coming in right around at that uh, uh, half a volt per microsecond that we were expecting. All right, looking good.